Hi, this is Rusty from Frontier Studios. Uh, I'm going to do a quick video because there was a user on the forum that was having an issue recording audio into uh, the 1642 and then back out through the same channel. So uh, a couple things to start. First, we're going to assume that we've already connected the 1642 to the PC or Mac because once we've done that, uh, things are pretty similar. Um, we'll, we'll be able to confirm that by the fact that Universal Control is running and the clock source is the Studio Live internal and that you can access the VSL software. Once that's done, we're going to go into Studio One and create a new song. I'm going to call this song 1642 uh, Test. And the first thing we need to do when we get into Studio One is to set up our inputs. So to do that, we're going to go to we're going to open the mix window by either press clicking the mix button here or pressing F3 on the keyboard. And that'll bring up our mixer console and on the far left there's an IO button and we need to open that to get to our input outputs. So this is a default, an old default that I had in there. I'm going to remove that. So this is what uh, things will look like when you open up your your uh, your setup for the song. So the first thing we need to do is we need to generate our our DAW inputs, our Studio One inputs that correspond to the Studio Live. The easiest way to do that is to add um, 16 mono inputs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hit apply and you'll see that for each input there's a corresponding input on the actual device itself. We'll go to outputs and you'll notice that there's a main output that's already there. This cannot be deleted. But we're going to move that main stereo output over to channel 17 and 18, which are the two track uh, inputs or outputs rather on the studio line. Then we're going to add 16 mono outputs. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and click apply and again you'll see that each of these sub outputs correspond to the same channel output on the Studio One. So the inputs can be routed to any input on the Studio One but the most logical way is like this 16 to 16, 1 to 1 and so on and so forth. Same with the outputs. So we're done with that I'll hit, click OK. The next thing we're going to do is go to the Studio Live really fast and we want to notice that uh, I currently have the Studio Live set up um, zeroed out. So I've zeroed out the board, all the faders are down, and we're set up basically to start recording. Uh, I've got an input channel which is channel 1. I've got a condenser microphone hooked up to it so I'm going to turn on phantom power and I'm going to check and make sure that I have input, which I do. I'm going to turn the volume up a bit and we're ready to record on that track. So we're going to go back into our Studio One software and we're going to add a, a new auto audio add audio track mono. We're going to go to the mixer window and select the output of that track as sub one which would be the same the channel one that you recorded into we're going to be it's also going to be our output so sub one equals channel one output we're going to enable record and monitor and we should see levels there which we do and that's okay so now that we're ready to record I'm just going to record uh, some quick audio hello one two three four hello one two three four so we had some audio recorded there it's not very loud um, but it should be loud enough to hear it back I'm going to turn this off and actually this is a neat little trick anytime you have audio source that's not very loud um, provided you don't have a lot of background noise and the audio is clear you can go into the track inspector and uh, as long as it's selected and normalize the audio track and that will bring the volume up. I'm going to trim this audio just a bit here and slide it to the front and then I'm going to hit P which will loop around the audio. I'm going to tighten this up a bit there. So now if we loop this in the transport bar and hit play 
you'll see that we have no sound, but we do have signal. So let's go back to our Studio Live and we're going to disable our 48 volt phantom power. So we got a little bit of sound coming through our microphone, but that's, that's not where we're going. I'll turn this volume down. It also should be noted that the, the trim here does not affect the FireWire input. So when I enable fire, the FireWire input, you're going to start seeing a level come in on this channel. And you'll see the level here because I have the meter selected for input. So you're going to see the input from each channel across here. So as soon as I enable this, you'll see input coming in. So there we go. And here's our audio track coming in on channel one. In order to hear it, we it has to go through the channel faders and then to the mains. I'm going to turn the mains up. And then we're going to slowly bring this, this channel in. Oh, I just realized I'm actually monitoring all of this audio through this main, um, through the headphone out. So I need to select main there. So we make sure that we actually have the main channel coming through the headphones. One, two, three, four. Hello. One, two, three, four. Hello. One, two, three, four. Hello. One, two, three, so, four. Hello. One. You hear our audio track. So the next thing I want to do, just to show proof of concept is to send another audio track back out through another channel on the Studio Live. So the, the way I'm going to do that is to duplicate this track with events. I'm going to shift this track slightly to the right so we have kind of a stereo thing happening. I'm going to extend the loop to encompass that. Then I'm going to go to that second channel or second track and I'm going to assign it to sub 2. Then we're going to go back to the Studio Live we're going to enable the FireWire input on track 2 or channel 2. Bring the volume up for that channel. And when we hit play, oh, one more thing. I'm going to link these two channels together uh, in an effort to bring the, uh, the, the stereo image left and right. So we've linked those together. Now we should hear a nice stereo uh, bounce back of that audio track. Hello, hello one, one, two, three, three, three four. four. Hello, hello, one, one, two, two three, three, four. four. Hello, hello, one, one, two, three, three, four. four. Hello, hello, one, one, two, three, four. Hello. Okay, so the nice thing about this is now we've got the ability to add uh, compressors, limiters, all of the everything that's on this channel now can be affected by this fat channel. So we can uh, assign EQs. Um, you'll, uh, you can hear the gain. Hello, one, two, three, three, four. Hello, one, two, three, three, four. Hello, one, two, three, three, four. Hello, hello, one, two, three, four. Hello, hello, one, two, three, four. Hello, hello, one, two, three, three, four. Hello, hello, one, two, 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 three, three, four. Hello, hello, one, two, three, four. Hello, hello, one, two, three, three, four. Hello, hello, one, two, three, three, four. Hello, hello, one, one, two, three, three, four. Hello, hello, one, two, three, three, four. Hello, hello, one, 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 one, two, the, the main part is really setting up the, the input-output. Uh, this is the most important part of making this thing work. You have to have your inputs assigned one-to-one -one and the outputs assigned one-to-one. -one. Once you get that, uh, the rest is just turning on, pushing the right buttons at the right time to determine whether the you've got the firewire coming in or you've got the hardware microphone or whatever that may be coming in. So um, that's the way you set up the 1642. If you have any more questions, uh, I'm easy to find on the Personas forums. My username is RLWMMW. Uh, send me a PM. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.